10 minutes is far less than 1 hour and is literally 600 seconds. I had a lot of fun last time putting a time limit of 1 hour so I decided to kick it up a notch to see if it's possible for me to create a game within 10 minutes. This one was so much more chaotic because of that pesky time limit. In the end, I was somewhat successful which of course you'll see in this video. Before I jump into how I actually accomplished this, there's a few things I want to go over. First off, there is a link in the description to the full raw recording of me making this game. This is mainly for those who are interested in seeing me make this game in real time. And this video is meant to showcase my design process and thoughts throughout this challenge. Secondly, let's go over the rules for this challenge. Number 1, unlimited time to plan this game. Usually I do my planning during the time period, but with such a small time limit, I decided I should, you know, plan ahead. This includes making a design document and some basic sprites. The game ultimately ended up being visually simple, so I don't think that would have impacted the process as a whole. And number two, 10 minutes to make the game. This is pretty self-explanatory. The game itself must be made within a 10 minute time frame. However, I already knew that this game wouldn't be the best, so for the sake of this video and getting out a more complete game, this video will showcase a sort of post 10 minute section showcasing changes and improvements that I've made to the game to make it more polished. I'll first go over the 10 minute version of the game and talk about the changes after of course. And with that, those are the only restrictions I forced myself to stick within. So let's jump right into making a game in just 10 minutes. As with all my other projects, I always make a design document outlining exactly what I have to make. Since the main restriction for this game was making it in 10 minutes, I had to keep in mind what would be reasonable to put out within that time frame. First, I came up with a simple concept that I knew I could pull off. A one screen leveled platformer. The entire stage would be on one screen, and the goal would be to jump to get some sort of collectible. With that in mind, I came up with a more refined list of requirements for each level. The player would move with the left and right arrows, and be able to jump by pressing space. Another mechanic I really wanted to have was the ability to wall jump. This would allow the levels to have a bit more flavor to them. Next, I came up with a few more of the required objects for the level. This includes platforms, walls, spikes that when touched restart the level, and a collectible or level goal. All these are relatively simple to create, so I wasn't worried about that. Now, in terms of artistic design for the game itself, I decided that this game should have a monotone palette of just black and white. With this in mind, I decided to work on creating some level sketches. Each level here was planned out with each element in mind, and I decided on only aiming to have around 4 levels since, well, 10 minutes is 10 minutes, and it's not a lot of time. 4 levels felt perfectly doable to me. Along with the level mockups, I made two other mockup screens, a basic windscreen, and a title. With the design document outlined, I moved on to making some really, really quick sprites. This didn't take much time, but I didn't want to worry about this when actually making the game. So next, I designed mockups for what the sprites should look like. First up I made the player sprite, it's literally a 16x16 16 16 square, and I also made a quick hitbox for the player for detecting wall jumps. Anyways, after I made a basic platform sprite, a particle sprite, which is really just a small square, a sprite for the spikes, and a shard or something that the player has to collect. With all that out of the way, I was ready to move on to the actual challenge, which was making the game. So, the main challenge begins. 10 minutes on the clock, no more, no less. I was feeling quite nervous here, but let's go over my main process of making this game. The first thing I immediately added to the game was something known as the platform movement object. This is a blessing of an object in Click Team, as it handles a lot of work required to make a platformer. You can modify things like gravity and x velocity, and a whole bunch of other variables. Alongside this I dropped in the ultimate full screen object, which would just be used for resizing the game itself. Next, I imported the player sprite and began making the stage, starting with the floor, ceiling, and walls. Each platform I decided to have a width of 5 pixels as to not take up much space. Afterwards, I imported all of the pre-made objects and sprites from earlier including the hitbox, spikes, and the collectible. Next, I assigned the player 3 variables known as starting x, starting y, and jump. Let me explain what each variable does here. At the start of the level, the player's X and Y coordinates are set to starting X and starting Y respectively. This is so that when the player dies, they are set back to those coordinates. And I wouldn't have to hard code in something like set the player's X coordinate to 35 and set the player's Y coordinate to 10. This just makes it easier. 
jump is a variable that determines if the player can jump. Having the value be equal to 1 allows the player to jump, and if it's 0, the player can't. This variable was added mainly for wall jumping, as I didn't want the player to have an infinite number of jumps. Essentially, when the player jumps, a value of 1 is subtracted from this value. However, if the player either touches the ground or a wall, this value is set back to 1, thus allowing wall jumps. Afterwards, I added the basic requirements for the platform movement object to work, and that includes setting the player as the main object, and adding in two events, one for each arrow key, and a jump event for when pressing the spacebar and the player is touching either the ground or a wall. Within the first four minutes, I had a build looking like this. However, the wall jump was kinda buggy, allowing for infinite jumps, which is obviously not intended. However, this was fixed by simply adding a condition so that only one action happens when the event loops. Essentially, this makes it so that the player can't touch the same wall twice and jump. It's pretty self-explanatory. Next, I added a collision event for when the player touches the spikes. When this happens, the player would be sent back to the starting X and Y coordinates. Here's what that looks like in action. After, I made a quick event for when the player touches the gem, so the gem would be destroyed. With that, I had all of the elements for a basic level. I was around 6 minutes in, so I began ramping up my speed and designing levels based around the sketches I made. Here's a quick montage of me making all those levels. And with three levels made, I was out of time. Rest in peace to the fourth level. Anyways, let's check out some gameplay from this 10 minute build. So yeah, I had three levels that went from one to the other, and all the mechanics were there. I made the third level really, really fast, and with the placement of spikes, it was a little bit tricky, but yeah, I'd consider this a success in my books. But the game obviously needed polish, so let's move on to how I expanded this game a bit further to make it more playable and complete. The first thing I added in terms of polish were some general effects. This includes a player trail and some particles for either dying or touching the gem. Alongside this, I created some quick transitions between each level to make it feel more smooth. Next, I actually composed up some quick music. I made the game's soundtrack in Mixcraft Studio 8, a great digital audio workstation. The song for this game is a short loop, seeing as the game is really really short, so it works. Alongside the music, I opened up BXFR once more and made some quick sound effects in it. Afterwards, I imported all of these sounds into the game. Next, I came up with a title screen with the name Comical Cube. I'm not too sure why I chose this title considering the cube isn't that comical, but whatever. And afterwards, I made a quick win screen saying, Congratulations, you are won the game. Don't question it, it works for what it is. And with all those out of the way, I decided to bring back something that was unfortunately cut from the original time limit. Yup, level 4 was revived. And with level 4 back in and the title and windscreen created, the game was complete. This was definitely a really chaotic experience, especially towards the end, as I think I overscoped the original plan for the 10 minute time period, but I got it done and made something a bit more polished at the end of it. It was really fun pushing myself further to create something in what seems like an impossible amount of time. As always, there's a link in the description to the game's itch.io page, and once again, this game is playable in your browser, so go give it a shot. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, as it helps out quite a bit, and if you have any other suggestions for games or challenges, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.